What exactly is going on with Ant-Man Quantum Mania? Welcome to Voice of the Fat Mantis. Originally, I had no intention of making a video about Ant-Man. I've seen it, I've expressed my feelings both on a tweet and on my other podcast, Fanboy Modeling School, which I do with the Hold Up TV. I didn't think I actually had to go into depth about my feelings or what's going on, but here we are in the second week and even more things are happening and we've got to talk about the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is that this movie ain't making no money. But before we get into it, remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel, keep tuning in to Voice of the Fat Mantis. Viewers like you make this all possible. Now let's get back to taking a big old deuce on Ant-Man 3 Quantum Mini. And for the record, the reason why I'm not calling it this is I'm not saying all that. I am not. That, that title is completely out of control. You got to rein it in, Marvel. You got to rein it in. That's for all creators. So I've seen Ant-Man and I think that my... Initial experience is this. It's not just that Modoc is silly. That's something to be laughable. The entire movie is laughable. The MCU has never attempted to make Ant-Man or the Ant family comics accurate. So as a result, all they've created is a dull, directionless franchise whose hero is a half-assed beta male who never actually does anything heroic. When he does something heroic, it's completely boilerplate or something that anyone else would do. For an example, in this movie, instead of giving him an actual arc, they, which is usually expressed best when characters have to make tough decisions on screen, his tough decision is whether he's going to give Kang what he wants or save his daughter. That's actually not a hard decision. Any person, any parent particularly, would do that. And so he is just going along and allowing things to happen to him. He's just reacting to things, and he's reacting to things in not a fun way. Now, very often, if you don't have the plot, you don't have the writing, you don't have the visuals, then you make us laugh. And Ant-Man is usually known for making us laugh. However, there were very few laughs in this one. There was a joke when he first meets the Resistance Fighters, Characters who take up way too much screen time. And there was this joke about, well, you'll know the joke I'm referring to. And it was hysterical. It had me really laughing out loud. But other than that, everything else is just a shrug. There's a lot of cliches. And remember, guys, this is a spoiler discussion. For instance, Bill Murray shows up and he plays the exact same character as the collector as the grandmaster, as any other old guy. There's always some old guy who dresses normal and, and is like very eccentric, and he's in the middle of cosmic aliens, and you're like, what is that dude doing here? What is he doing here? What was Bill Murray's character doing there? He did literally nothing, and, and they just had him in there to have him in there. And so I am not into such parlor tricks. And speaking of parlor tricks, there was a parlor trick that they could have pulled off that would have absolutely made this movie essential watching. And that is having guest stars and cameos of other Avengers or important villains and just pack in those Easter eggs so people feel they have to go see it. They didn't even bother doing this. Why? Because they thought Kang would carry the ball across the end zone. And although everyone likes to praise Kang and what he's doing over there, Ultimately, he did not do enough power lifting to carry anything over any end zone. As a matter of fact, he's really a weak villain. Let's look at it this way. When Thanos was first introduced into the MCU, the first thing that he really does, other than at end credit scenes, is he beats the crap out of the Hulk in a fist fight, something the Hulk is the master of. Beat him so bad, the Hulk never wanted to come out of his transformation again. He never wanted to go Hulk again. That's how bad he did it. Then he goes around and he's just killing people. He's killing Gamora. You know, responsible for Black Widow's death, responsible for countless other characters' deaths, and then dusts everyone at the end of the movie. Now, that is a villain. This guy couldn't even take out the Ant family, and uh, I gotta say, MCU Ant family has not been rapping. On the acting front, other than Kang, I can't praise anybody. They recasted uh, Cassie Lang to the most insufferable, boring, bland person 
I have ever seen on screen. No offense, Catherine Newton, but I would rather take a bullet to the head than have to watch you act your way out of paper bag ever again. What a garbagey move that they did. Actually, in the original time we've seen adult Cassie or teenage Cassie, the last actress who did it gave us pathos. She gave us passion. There was actually, in that small scene, so much energy, so much emotion that I wanted to hang on to. She had none of this, and that was a bad move. Now, this shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. Peyton Reed has not produced anything of value ever. The Ant-Man 1 was good, too wasn't even good and now there's three the fact that he survived a trilogy working for marvel he did this old secret a lot of people do it in offices across the land they just keep their head down and they fall upward they keep their head down don't cause any trouble don't piss anybody off don't give kevin feige a reason to scream and take his coffee mug and slam it against the wall like a psycho which i'm sure a lot of other directors do such as sam raimi or edgar wright for instance and so just by doing that, he's like, I guess I'm going to get another movie out of this. I guess I'm going to get another movie out of this. No one stopped for a second to say, should he get another movie? Because ultimately, he really is a hack. And he ain't doing anything in the world of cinema that I can't live without. I know a lot of people are saying, ah, it's just okay. To be honest, I think they're being too nice to this movie. I think this movie is just bad all around. Now getting further into it that's my opinion what it's worth is whatever i know a lot of people fear that by saying this on their channels they're going to chase the uh, marvel shills away and they're going to lose access to marvel well marvel has never given me access so i'll say what i please but also if you don't agree with me that's fine we can absolutely agree to disagree i hope you continue to hang out in this channel and that you're cool with that the idea that i have such an extreme reaction to ant-man but there's something else going on here so this movie can't be just all right and i'll tell you this it's because a lot of people went opening weekend but it has had a 70 percent drop in its second weekend this is an indication that both word of mouth and also just what you heard in the grapevine is not living up to what it should this is a besmirchment not just of ant-man not just of the mcu but of comic movies everywhere people are starting to fear that maybe the comics movie bubble is bursting and that maybe like you know james gunn's superhero you know whatever he's doing in dc is a little too late and they basically missed the party there has been declining quality and box office performance from most of marvel in the latest years i feel like i've only since endgame only liked spider-man no way home amazing and dr strange multiverse of madness and the rest of them i have either just slept through and just can't even remember the plot lines or I really had a bad visceral reaction to it. This being one of them. What is going on over there? Why are they imploding? Why have they taken the quality away? For one, I want the tropes to go away. I know. Every genre, particularly superheroes, have tropes. But here's one that is particularly annoying. In this, they introduce ant-man to a group of like rebels who live in the quantum zone and they want to rebel against the evil kang they're like kang is mistreating us we need to do something so of course they create a rebellion and at the end of the movie so they could do this typical thing where it flashes between our hero having a one-on-one -on -one battle with the villain and epic war scenes that really belong in star wars this has gotten so old, I am literally, I literally throw up in my mouth every time it's on. Wakanda for Lava did it on the boat. Uh, Black Panther 1, it didn't even really fit in well, That you know, doing that trope. It was really horrible in Shang-Chi, and I'm just over it, man. I'm over the old man guest appearance that shouldn't be there. Like I said, the collector, the grandmaster, and now Bill Murray's character. I can do completely without these guys. I'm tired of the quirky aliens. I was fine with them in Guardians of the Galaxy, but this is all you have, Marvel. Every time characters go to another wor universe or world or planet, there's going to be quirky aliens with weird voices and, and just say weird things that will make us chuckle. Like this was a bad episode of Rick and Morty. It, you know, so people say that the writer's room was filled with Rick and Morty people. If it was, I didn't see it. 
I don't know what I sell, quite frankly. But what are we going to do about this just dreadful franchise? Now, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy 3 on the way in terms of Marvel. And so that could be a huge hit. It could be an epic failure. Who knows? I think James Gunn usually puts out a good product when he's directing and writing. So I have faith in that project. But what else is down the line? The Marvels? Have you heard about all the reshoots and delays they've done on the Marvels? They can't even get the plot right. They don't really know what they're doing. If you look it up, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but I dare you, my viewer, to go check out what they're planning for Marvel. Look at the leaks on the weird planets and strange situations these characters put themselves in and ask yourself, is that really a movie you want to see? And so this is a letter kind of to Kevin Feige, not just the people who want to see review of Ant-Man, but to all you guys in the industry of making these movies. Can you please crank it up a notch? Can you give us quality? Could you actually write a script that the fans are going to care about? Because quite frankly, I'm not sure if I want to give my money to Guardians of the Galaxy 3. I am that pissed off at you right now. This is terrible. You're bringing down an entire industry, which quite frankly, I think there are a lot of comic book stories and movies and ideas that have yet to be explored on the big screen, but we deserve to see them. And I would hate it for Kevin Feige and his laziness and his lazy crew to ruin that for us. This is the Fat Mantis, very passionately, but with a lot of love, giving you my review and my analysis of the ever- crashing and destroying franchise that is the mcu trust me i have no joy in saying this i want to be entertained i want to go and pay 22 dollars for an imax movie and see the grandiose superhero movie and i want to feel the way i felt in phase one and phase two and phase three god forbid we even reach the level of how i felt when i watched infinity war or Endgame. And I'm the Fat Mantis. Those are my two cents on everything going on with the Ant-Man. The real question is, what did you think about it? Please let me know down in the comments. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel. Keep tuning in to Voice of the Fat Mantis. I can't do this without any of y'all. Until next time, ciao for now.